What the fuck? <laughs> so I can see down here. Looks like somebody's torched something. Like a bolt. Alright, for the record, this is my first day up here working on it. I have not been anywhere near it with a torch. <laughs> yeah. What the hell? Yeah, I've it's seen there? Uh-huh. I've never in my life seen that before. I didn't pay attention it was loose. I just figured the entire time I was working on it the kingpin. It was just the whole thing moving, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to let you make a phone call before I continue putting this kingpin back in. Well, it's can we get the phone. top bolt off to remove that whole thing? Because it's all going to depend on if we can get that. Yeah, well, I can tell what happened. It broke. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's a definitely a... But I can probably fix that. If you can get it out. If you're funny, since you're solely ready for my welder. <laughs> now the good news is, uh, you know, since y'all are from a little further north, you're used to getting the buck broken bolts out. Yeah. Looks like I've already tried boys, something. Yeah. Well. Cherry tomato nut on there now. Nice. Let's cool off for a minute and then we'll. <laughs> Try it. See what hey, Michael, is. you want to come press the red button? <laughs> that the easy button? Yeah. So we got Tyler working on that. Tells me for the next month or two, I'm going to be going, how much? Yeah. <laughs> Jonathan's replacing the airbags up here. He's putting new ones on. Cleaning everything up before we put it together. Yeah. Like I said, I figured out the best way to do it is just to buy one. Yeah. <laughs> I even get my own peanut gallery here when I work. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> this is the bus owner here. Getting some sweat equity in on his bus here. I haven't heard him cuss once yet today. You haven't been listening? <laughs> I didn't hear you cussing. We found the big problem up front. <laughs> it was too stunned. Yeah. Nothing stuns me on a 60 year old bus. Yeah. <laughs> These things are long as hell. Yeah. Hmm. Get that good. Just fresh for it. Yeah. I think I'm just bending it. I think it's gonna go. Ready? Small as it? Yeah. Oh my god. That is the most disgusting pile of shit. I just stuck my finger in it too. It literally, that's on top of the airbag from the air beam. How could that much gook? That is unbelievable. That is nasty. <laughs> Touching the turd. <laughs> That is like dirt. Yeah. It's not rust. No, it's dirt. And that was up. It's almost like they had it on the ground at one time. I wonder if it went through a flood or something. How the hell could dirt get up in there? No idea. Makes me want to take an air hose up in there, though. <laughs> this is the other, not the shit pile airbag. <laughs> but the aluminum on it is all flaked up. You can see there's big pitting on it here. Yeah. 
Okay, so we're gonna do a tour of Dan's 1969 Flex Liner, flexible Flex Liner bus. We gotta come around the door here. It's a little tight at the moment. So I got some flexible 69 there. And this is turbo. Yeah, this bus has two turbos. <laughs> this one's noisier. <laughs> All right. And not as useful. Coming up. Watch out, Turbo. I don't want to step on you, buddy. Get back. Get back. You're not going anywhere. So the overall dash, is it different than your other bus? Very. Is it, yeah, is it shaped differently too? Or Yep. Yeah. It's well it's that that curved top part's about the kind of the same, but that's about it. You have a lot more switches and gauges and Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I put all kinds of stuff in it. Actually has a working fuel gauge, which is kind of neat. This is your backup camera? Yep. It's a little old school. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> pull the one out of the out of the other bus and put it in here. I just didn't get around to it. And this is all your generator controls up over here? Yep. Everything's nice and labeled and all that. That's nice. I get into so many buses, there's all kinds of switches and not a one of them tell what they're for. Right, yeah, he was very good about that, getting everything labeled. And then uh, it's automatic. Lots of storage in the, yeah, in the front. Cabinets. And I step back. To, do you want me to take my shoes off? I better. Yeah, I was in the yeah. shop. <laughs> so there's a TV there. Yep, which folds up when I'm traveling. Okay, how much shit do you have on your dashboard? Let's see. So you have a TPMS, <laughs> uh, back, uh, dash cam, yep. back GPS, cam, GPS, cell phone mount, backup cam. Is that everything? Yep. Pretty much. Sound bar up there. Do you have a habit of losing sunglasses or you just collect them? I No, they're, <laughs> I, I lose them really fast. So I buy these cheap uh, oh. safety glass they sunglasses. Look, they look like, like nice ones. 12 pair at a time for three bucks. And you have a pull down sunshade up there? Yep, both sides of and the sides. The and, and, the sides. and there's curtains that slide around. Yeah, that's a, actually the first thing I did when I got this bus was build these curtain tracks. I figure out what that noise was. It's him outside. Oh. <laughs> and there's... All right, so let me get to the wide angle view here. So we've got a chair here. Turbo eating station. <laughs> <laughs> very important. Some whiskey. <laughs> well, also very important. And... Is this couch turned into a bed? Yep, yep. That one, that's a jackknife. Turns out. Into Is a... this 102 wide? No. 96? 96? It really feels, feels wide in here. It's got a lot of... It's open. It gives you that feeling because it's an open layout. There's a lot of space there, especially in the kitchen. Yeah, I think the dinette seats are probably a little skinnier than what I'm used to seeing, too. So <laughs> there's, that... there's a story to that. Oh. <laughs> so when he built this bus, he started in the back, started building forward, and he was going to put the kitchen on the passenger side and the dinette on the driver's side. For some reason, that wasn't going to work. I don't know if it had to do with the water or what. But So he thought, well, I'll just put the kitchen on that side. So he did that. And then brought the dinette in and went, oh, yeah, I made that other side wider. <laughs> so he actually had to cut the dinette down to a two-person from a four-person ah. because it stuck way out in the aisle. Well, that makes it look a lot more open. I here. like it a lot. Yeah. I'm glad it turned out that way. Yeah, I really like that, having that open space in there. So what was the guy's name? Who did this conversion? Uh, Ed Ayer. Ed Ayer. Ed and Ann, yep. Fortunately, he passed last, last year. And then we have a closet on the left. Yep. Um, and double then, closet I've actually got. And then got, bathrooms so. on this side. Shower, big, big toilet. Shower. Nice headroom in here. You could be another foot taller and you would still have room for you. Yeah, most of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, me too. I mean, there's, there's eight to yeah. ten inches above right. my head. <laughs> and then big bath. Another closet with a washer and the So yeah, the bedroom's close to the close to the bathroom, just right there and nice. Yep. Nice. There's a little washer dryer in the that closet. Oh washer dryer. Is it the one unit that does everything or is it where you gotta switch from the top to the bottom? No, it's 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 not even that. It's the one of the Chinese spin dryer. Ah, got it. Very nice. Pull out pantry there. All the 
all the drawers and cupboards have magnetic locks on them. So yeah, that's neat how that works. You have to have the, as long as you don't lose the little plug, you're good. That's why I I went on when I bought it. I went on Amazon and got a ten pack of these. And so I got magnets all over the place. I'm stick that to the right place. So nice. People have probably never seen those before. <laughs> You have a, also have a, a good hat collection. Yeah, <laughs> I need a place for my hat. Um, one thing they didn't like was being cold. This has three over-the-road furnaces in it. Oh. Um, you know, plumbed into the cooling system. There's one in the front of the bed. There's one in the bottom of this cabinet. In the middle there. Yeah. And then there's one right above the throttle and brake pedals. Oh, oh. Keep your feet warm up there. Great. Very nice. Tell you when to stop. That's a pretty good place. Do you see the problem? That's because the block off plate has failed and that's grease and oil together. That's very smart. Turn it down a little bit. That's as low as it'll go. Okay. Looks like both tank came out of there now. <laughs> it is not just bubbles. Well, this whole front end was a real shit show. Um, they had originally taken it apart to try to take out the kingpin. They apparently couldn't get the kingpin out. We, uh, we could tell that by the way it was beat on already on the top and the uh, hardware wasn't put back on right and nothing was tight and obviously they had done it. But then they'd been in here for other things on the spindle. You know, the fact that they had broke this off and it had a weld in there. That's our weld from today, but it was already welded like that. Um, they tried to get it out, but then they just put it back together and left it. Uh, without that on there. Crazy. So we can't get that out. We drilled it out. We tried welding to it with a nut. Then we tried to drill it and put a big screw uh, extractor in it. Couldn't get it. Our buddy Luke, U.S. coach, is going to send us a spindle off of a 4106. It's the same. Um, so we're going to get the whole knuckle and we're going to replace the spider, the brake, everything. Just, just have new on it. And then we'll have the new kingpin. We already unfortunately put the bushings in this one and reamed them and had it all ready to go. But I've got a couple of extra bushings here for it. So we're not ruining a whole kingpin set just to, to do that. Um, I'm not sure if we can just buy the bushing, but I, I have a set here, so we're good. The other side of the front axle is the one that had the brake drum that was way out of balance. Uh, today, the guy's got the airbags here on the front, on this side and on the other side. We've already done the radius rod bushings in here. They're all new. Um, so we're getting it going, waiting on parts is what's, you know, that's the story of everything around here, waiting on parts. Uh, this side, they got the new shock on, the new airbags, all that ready to go. This is the replacement drum that I had 
And then back here on the back, Michael came in today and worked on his bus and he got these two airbags on. Uh, we're just, now this one's tightened. This one's not tight yet, but it's all, it's together. So we're just gonna continue tightening the nuts on it. Uh, we have the new shock to go on here. That'll get done. We're gonna put a new seal in there. We're gonna pull the hub, repack the bearings, do all that. A couple other little things. There's, that's all like wire tied, bailing wire together on the leveling arm. You know, we can't have that. Uh, we went ahead and stole one of the U-joint uh, little end cap, the lock plate and a bolt to replace the Dan's bus because this bus is going to get get a whole new drive shaft. The drive shaft is totally shot on it. Um, I gave him, I had a couple of airbag block off plates that one of our customers, uh, Rick, had given us. And I went ahead and just donated them to him. He didn't need two kicks in the nuts today. Uh, that front spindle and assembly with, and everything, that was, uh, I think it was around $900 for that. So these plates are like 300 bucks a piece. And I had two of them that, again, our buddy Rick gave to me to give to somebody if they needed them. So we donated them. Because his plates, they're so corroded and nasty. This is one that had the big pile of shit stuff on it. It's still a big pile, but look how... I don't know if you can tell how deep that is, but I mean, that's more than halfway through the plate, three quarters of the way through, it's just eaten up and gone. Um, I didn't want to take all the time to put that brittle aluminum plate back on there. So that's going to be done. So Dan's bus, he's got the drive shaft thing fixed on there. Um, it looks like that was just air bubbles in the uh, oil. It's not necessarily metal. Once we let it sit and settle, it's not all shiny. It was just, it's more air bubbles than anything else in there. The bearing looked really good. Uh, we pulled the bearing out, the race looks great. So that's not from there. So, so far this bus is doing real good. It's passing all the inspections. We didn't have the oil filter number for his Kubota diesel generator. It's a little uh, three cylinder Kubota. And the oil filter is ne oil's apparently never been changed on it because it's painted the same color as the engine is on there. Um, so we, we're looking up that oil filter number for that. But uh, yeah, waiting on parts for this bus too, and then uh, have it back together. But overall, this bus is in such good condition. You know, they've redone all of the metal work on here, anything that could possibly rust. They added these leveling jack things in here, which are really unique. Uh, they kind of triangle shape there between the tires. Um, but yeah, you can see how nice and clean and rust-free everything is on, on this flexible. That the, the person who did the conversion on it really, really did a good, good job. Well, that's where we're at right now with these buses. So this one, uh, tomorrow we should have some wheels actually back on this on one side of it. We're waiting on parts for this side for that new uh, spindle and everything. And then uh, on this one, we're mostly waiting on parts too. Uh, a little bit of work that we can do here and there, but it's uh, we should have parts come in on Thursday for it. And then uh, should be out of here Friday, no problem. I uh, don't anticipate, knock on wood, any issue there. This one I was hoping to have out of here this week, depending on when that new hub uh, spindle comes in and everything. Um, that'll be the the delay on that. But definitely by the first part of next week, it'll be out of here. It's got to come back in again then for some more work here. It's going to stay on the property. Um, since Michael bought it, we're, you know, we're, we got a bunch of work to do to it. We got to pull the transmission on it. It's got a output shaft leak. There's oil on the floor there. So we're gonna pull the transmission out of there, put some new seals in it. Um, still got a few other things to do to it too. And then uh, we're gonna get into the cooling system on it. We'll start replacing hoses, but only only hoses and stuff that are enough. To, we think we can get it home safely for him and then he can take it by him and a little bit at a time, or we'll move it here on the property and he'll come here on the weekends or something and start going through and pulling hoses and getting stuff made like that. So he can do a lot of that work himself uh, on it. He's pretty skilled at stuff like that. So we're just doing this this stuff here to get it ready to go, ready to drive for the road and everything and with the new airbags, shocks, radius rod bushings, the wheel bearings all taken care of. It's gonna be a real nice bus. Tomorrow we're gonna put that on. That's the, uh, it's kind of like a tie rod end, uh, the ball joint. Uh, it goes on the end of the power steering ram. We replaced that on another 4104 a little while ago. And that is the last new old stock one that Luke had. So we're gonna save the old one to see if it's rebuildable so we can continue to keep these buses going when it gets hard, hard, and harder and harder to get new parts um, that were available out there that just aren't available anymore. But hopefully that can be rebuilt 
or we can send it out to a machine shop or something in the future for other ones. So we're gonna, we're gonna stop throwing away the old ones because we can no longer get new ones. So again, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. We'll have another video, maybe tomorrow. Thank you. From a mile away, you can hear them play as they climb that hill with ease. But at the top of that mountain, there's a new life waiting for those who can make the run. They can make it to the top, Scott will put them in the shop till their new life has begun. Buzz Grease Mountain, where the buses come to run.